a huge opportunity right now for people when that regulation is brought in. It could have a catastrophic effect or a euphoric effect. Yeah, I think you could generate significant wealth for yourself. Welcome back to the Black Swan Capitalist YouTube channel. Today, we're with my dear brother, Vandell, and our friend, Jake Claver from the Digital Ascension Group. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today, Jake. This, <laughs> this call is long overdue, and I know you've been doing some very exciting things. I spoke with Max the other day. He told me a lot about the milestones and the achievements you guys have accomplished in the digital asset space. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me back. It's you know long overdue, like you said. Um, excited to be here to, to talk about all the wonderful things that are going on. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jake Claver, um, the director of Digital Ascension Group. We are a family office. We specialize in digital assets and tokenization of financial products. Uh, we offer a full scope of services for, you know, affluent clients. Uh, that's everything from CPA to accounting, wealth management, funds and foundations, philanthropic services, catered toward digital assets, insurance as well. Um, actually pulling out some new things when it comes to PPLI here in the very near future. Uh, but along with that, we, uh, we invest in and work in companies that are developing solutions that utilize the technology and drive innovation across the space. And that's really what Digital Ascension Group is about. Yeah, I love it. I think you guys are way ahead of your time because it's just a matter of time before financial institutions and other offices really start to go in that path, you know, with this mm -hmm. whole uh, shift taking place. So it's it's just a matter of time. I think you guys have a real competitive edge, and I love what you guys are doing. Yeah, I appreciate that. Let's, um, so we we have the first ever you know wealth management service with with PolySign and Standard Custody. Um, we custody our clients' assets there, and um, I think that that's probably the next iteration of this. You know, institutions, banks, enterprises uh, coming into the space, but you got you have compliance that's involved with that, right? Um, and so the regulation that that comes into vogue over the next two years, I think is really going to determine uh, the US's success in this space, along with, you know, the adoption curve and how quickly things happen. Uh, we just were really blessed to be on the bleeding edge of that and know the right people in the right, right place at the right time. And um, I'm excited to be here and be a part of it. Um, before we hopped on, Versan was uh, talking about uh, Janet Yellen. And so, um, you know, the stuff that she's proposed uh, and in Congress the other day, they're, they're going to bring in regulation. And um, yeah, what do, you, what do you guys think the, the implications of that's going to be? Mm -hmm. You know, we got the stable coin bill that's out there. Oh, Where yeah. do you all think that leads? After listening to Janet Yellen's statements, she's advocating for crypto regulation, which is also long overdue. We see this as a positive step forward because now we're talking about what needs to be discussed. As it's just so disheartening to see how for the last two years, we've been raising all these alarms about what she's talking about. And this was largely ignored. They turned a blind eye to all of this. We saw the fall of FTX, Celsius, Terra Luna, and it's like people forgot about all that. Her statements reflect on what's happening in today's traditional banking system and all the challenges that we see over there. This ties into is the importance of stable coins. And I think it's probably the most important thing that nobody's really covering as much as we should be covering because we want to talk about digital assets and crypto, but we don't want to talk about the stability of it. You know, I see this as a positive step moving forward. Yeah, I would agree. You know, Jerome Powell's talked about private stable coins. He's mentioned that those will exist. You know, I, and I think things will exist on a continuum. There'll, there'll obviously be CBDCs, uh, and I know there's a lot of fear and concern about that. You know, there could be a totalitarian, uh, you know, establishment that then invokes certain rules, and if that's the only currency that you can use, then it limits people's capacity to earn, save do what they need to do. Um, I don't think that that'll be the case here in the US. I think that our culture and constitution and laws, you know, inhibit that that from happening. Um, and I think there'll be, you know, sovereign nations will issue CBDCs and, and use the smart contracts that, you know, they're able to code on top of those 
to incentivize and disincentivize spending in their economy as fits within their cultural norms. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, we've got bridge currencies that, that you know, we like that uh, will allow all that to be interoperable. Um, I think that that'll be a huge catalyst, um, potentially for maybe even some some broader implications in the market when it comes to Tether uh, and, yes. and the most liquid assets that currently exist. Um, you know, depending on how that gets audited and what that looks like when that regulation's brought in, it could have a catastrophic effect or a euphoric effect on the market. We'll have to see, you know, which way it goes. Yeah, well, in regards to that specifically, I think as regulations really get solidified, um, I think it would be very euphoric for people that own these assets before regulations. And I think it would be catastrophic for those trying to get in afterwards because they might even come up with laws that are same as uh, the equities in stock market, where you have to be an accredited investor, have a million dollars or more to Mm -hmm. participate for your safety. So, um, yeah, I see that coming with digital assets once regulations are in place at some point. I think there would be a chance of that because um, just how you can buy stocks and, you know, um, get involved pre-IPO, they have regulations around that for accredited investors. But right now is a time where uh, the little guy actually has a competitive advantage where you don't have those um, those barriers in place where you can participate and get your hands on them and store them early before the regulations really fall in line. So I think that's um, an amazing thing for people that are interested in participating. What do you think, Jake? It's a huge opportunity right now for people. And and you're not, you know, 99% of these things are going to go to zero. I'm just going to yeah, with Absolutely. 100%. I agree with you. There's a ton of garbage out there, but if you can do some research on your own and get in with the right people and figure out where things are going to go and position yourself now, previous to those liquidity events and the adoption of this technology, yeah, I think you could generate significant wealth for yourself and and maybe future generations, right? And that's that's where we come in at Digital Ascension Group. We want to provide you know the expertise and the guidance for wealth management and you know make sure you don't have to get rich again or you don't lose it on the other mm-hmm. side of this most people end up um and i see when i say most people it's a statistic like people yeah. that win the lottery and come into a lot of money very quickly and they don't have the network of people the experience managing the capital um the skill sets traits and beliefs that are required in order to do that they end up going bankrupt within three to five years yeah yeah, um, yeah. that's accurate mm-hmm and so, yeah. you know, I, I would encourage people to develop those things as well. Previous to the liquidity event, you know, I have a lot of people that are proactive and we meet with and we help them set up LLCs or trusts or things to protect them and mitigate tax implications. And and once those things are in place, people feel accomplished and they're happy and they've they've taken, you know, you know, you talked about the milestones, right? Mm-hmm. You want to have these stair steps to things. And oftentimes they come back and they say, well, what, what's next? And I'm like, sit on your hands <laughs> yeah yeah and, and learn become the person you need to be uh jim Rohn said uh it, it's best that you become a millionaire before you make a million dollars otherwise you'll just end up losing it um so that would be kind of the message you know uh for people that, that maybe have been proactive and put things in place you know just continue to develop yourself personal development's always in you know a good investment and mm-hmm. um I think that there's going to be a lot of people whose lives get changed because of this opportunity on, on the accredited investor piece that you mentioned there, uh, Biden did propose that they move that to 10 million. So currently the qualifications for an accredited investor here in the U S are that as an individual, if you're not married, you make more than $200,000 a year. If you are married, I think it's like three fifty, uh, or you have a million dollar net worth between you and your spouse outside of your equity in your primary residence. All of those qualify, or you can take the Series 65 and deal with all the compliance and reporting and having a broker sponsor you. And it's just a lot of headache for that. Yeah. Um, so these are wholesale prices. That's what I tell everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they're retail, re- retail is for suckers. The institutional adoption hasn't happened yet. 
And I think that's because of the regulation. So really, this is an opportunity to be investing again in the economy for tomorrow. I'll just mention, uh, I'm sure you guys put a disclaimer on this, but nothing here is financial advice, all only for entertainment and educational purposes only. Always speak with the financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Uh, but yeah, I, I completely mm -hmm. agree with you. Um, I know people, um, well, I'll tell you a story about my dad. Yeah. Yeah. So before, before he passed away, um, back in 08, I watched him get decimated. He had the majority of his wealth in the market and at the bottom, he had about a hundred thousand left. He had, he had been invested his whole life. And, and after all of it, he had pulled out close to the bottom and, um, before they bailed out, uh, American airlines, he had a buy order with the full hundred thousand set up on the computer at like a little over a dollar a share. Oh. And I watched him back out and not pull the trigger on that. Um, had he done that, he would have been retired much sooner, probably had a better quality of life, maybe even lived longer. Um, there's, there's going to be opportunities in your life. There's, there's other people that I've talked to that, that knew about Bitcoin in 2010 or 2011 and didn't buy it, or it was just too hard. They didn't want to mess with it. Mm -hmm. Um, there's been other people I've talked to that had a bunch of Tesla stock early on and got fudded out of that when he got sued by the sec, same thing with Amazon, you know, in the early two thousands when the market crashed in and there were opportunities, um, when everybody else is scared, that's that's when the opportunities exist and when everybody else is euphoric it's probably the time to sell 100 percent, jake and on your point right there that when the market crashed for example from the lawsuit with um for example with these companies during the dot-com bubble um as long as the fundamentals haven't changed nothing matters if it goes to zero i'm gonna buy a ton load of it because that's a that's a mega Black Friday sale. That's how I see it. Because nothing has changed other than the price and price action. I mean, price is a horrible indicator of where it's going. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, Everything reverts to the mean, too. You know, and like you said, you, uh, I, I like Ben Graham and you know Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. You know, Munger just passed away recently. God rest his soul. Um, yeah. yeah. Berkshire yeah. Hathaway's made literally billions of dollars on value investing, right? You mm -hmm. find something that's fairly or fairly valued or underpriced in comparison to whatever the product or service it is that they're offering, the enterprise value. Yeah. And you buy it. It's and a simple method. It. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's not complicated. Um, most people want to get rich quickly. Um, and th that happens in this space too. And that also spoil people. Um, because if you do make money very quickly, that's what you think is the norm. And that's, it's normally not that way. Um, it normally takes five, 10, 20 years to really build wealth and you have to be consistent and you have to take action over that, that period. And, um, you know, the people that have been here, that have been in the space since 2017, 18, 19, you, you've probably, <laughs> <laughs> you've got patience. You've developed some of those traits Absolutely. at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we get the lawsuit with Ripple and that's been extended and drawn out. And I know a lot of people have, have fallen off. Um, but yeah. that's also the reason there's a 1%. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Absolutely. So, right. Um, well, I, I always tell people to, again, not financial advice, but if they're making these investments, again, in my opinion, this is a long-term game. We've already been waiting for quite a while. I think, like my brother said, mm -hmm. milestones. We're getting closer. But make those investments kind of just dollar cost average gradually, put them aside and try not to pay attention to all the noise. And there's a lot of noise in there. And I, I see that if you understood the fundamentals and done the research, you have nothing to worry about. Focus on, on your income, for instance. Mm -hmm. So me personally, I'm, I'm trading stocks all day. I'm still trading ETFs in traditional markets. So uh, I just don't spend too much time um, listening to all the noise. It's an asymmetric bet. You've got your biases. You understand the investment and the thesis, and then you just continue to dollar cost average. And and the people that's you, time in the market always beats timing the market. One hundred percent. Yeah. The if if you look at Fidelity and Merrill and and all of these uh, wealth managers, if you look at their largest accounts, they're dead people. 
where the money has just sat there for the longest period, right? Over <laughs> over an extended period in the market, right? Um, so that should tell you something. Like just dollar cost average into the things you know are going to be successful. Set it, forget it. When it happens, have a plan. You know, mm -hmm. make sure that you're positioned and prepared for that instance, and you know what you're going to do with that capital to continue to build your wealth, uh, or at least maintain it. Right? Enjoy retirement or, or get on to the next phase of your life. But um, yeah, in the interim, you know, don't stay level headed. Don't don't get footed out. Don't get overexcited. Um, exactly. People that are, are steady win the race. With rising inflation, bank failures, and massive layoffs across multiple sectors, the future of the economy remains uncertain. It's no wonder the central banks have been getting prepared by stockpiling gold. At ITM Trading, we have spent over 27 years building a team of seasoned researchers and analysts who can help you prepare for any financial crisis. Our experts are ready to provide you with proven strategies to safeguard your wealth and assets in the event of an economic downturn or currency reset, which is frankly inevitable. Don't wait until it's too late. Schedule your free gold and silver strategy call by clicking on the link in the description below. Yeah, and I, I think it's important, like you said, Jake, to have an exit strategy, at least an exit plan for when that instance, you know, comes. And um, just just as you said, you're 100 percent on the money. Uh, my business model is buy and hold. That's it. And it always time in the market always beats timing the market. That's 100 percent true. I know there is a lot of technical analysts and traders that have come on our show and they're out there in the space and they do very well. But the fact is, that's not for everybody because that requires a certain level of skill, a certain personality, and a 100% commitment to get it down right, you know? And um, I don't think everybody has that. So the, the truth is, if you have an exit strategy and you're continuing to buy and hold and have a long-term mindset, um, it's just a matter of time before you create substantial wealth and financial gains for yourself. Um, but I also wanted to note that when you're buying these digital assets and cryptocurrencies, the um, the technical analysis and the market cap, all this stuff does not take into account future utility of the assets. So it's not even a good indicator or a fair one to use if you're trying to calculate true fair market value of something you know what i mean yeah absolutely um i, I think these charts are going to move in ways that are completely different after yes. we see utility of these assets right now it's completely speculative mm -hmm. um and it'll continue to be that way until we do see some adoption we you have to have regulation before all that so we've we've got you know the, the two bedrocks for that in the financial system are our digital identity and custody once those things are implemented and used, we've got, you know, Medico partnered with uh, HSBC. They're supposed to launch crypto custody uh, Q1 here. Um, there, this is happening. You know, I'm, I'm talking to the leaders in the space. I'm seeing how they're moving. You know, I'm, I'm excited for 2024 and the tokenization of, of real world assets. And, and that's another way you can build wealth. If, if you're part of one of these companies, or you start a company that utilizes this technology in a unique way. And you understand the efficiencies that it can create in markets. There's going to be people that make a lot of money that way that didn't even invest, you know. So maybe you don't have the money to to make huge gains right now. Maybe you're early on in your career, or maybe you're a little later and and you've not made this a priority for whatever reason. If if you can get in with the right people that are on the right project, um, and and they're really developing a solution that's applicable and is going to be needed on the other side. Uh, I think there's a lot of wealth to be made that way as well. Yeah. Um, just something maybe we can talk about is uh, like a digital constitution. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned that in some of my older videos, you know, no doubt we are going digital, you know, without some sort of digital constitution, uh, there are concerns of weaponizing digital infrastructure. And because we've already seen that, 
there has to be some sort of dialogue for a digital age to protect ourselves. So how are we going to get there without even addressing those issues? You know, I want to hear what you guys oh, think. Oh, yeah, that's that's brilliant. I, I think that DAOs are going to have a huge impact that people don't realize later on. And, and most people aren't even probably aren't even familiar with what a DAO is. So a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. And that's not to say people aren't involved in that organization. They will have inputs and votes and be able to come together in a quorum and decide, you know, the, the, how things progress and change. Um, but in, instead of a, a hierarchical uh, setup, it's more of a, a round, cohesive ecosystem where everybody plays their role. And you might have a board of advisors that sit at the top that come together and make final decisions on things. You have to have some type of hierarchy in order for things to work. But uh, yeah, I'm with you. And, and the other beautiful thing about this technology is code can't be corrupted, right? That's true. You can't change so math. If if you you know were to utilize this technology and code in specific rules about the government, um, I've even looked at this application for trusts, right? Especially with families, uh, it's, it's often you know the first generation makes about the bunch of wealth, the second generation members a little bit about how how they came up and and maybe that they weren't always wealthy, uh, and so they have some respect for it. They tend to do a good job maintaining the wealth. And then by the third generation, they become entitled and believe that, you know, this is just their right and tend to things, things tend to fall apart. Um, and you got to be really cognizant of that, especially if you want wealth that lasts, you know, five, seven, 10 generations. Uh, the Vanderbilts didn't do a good job of that. The Rockefellers kind of pioneered the family office model. Uh, and that's why they, they've been able to persist. But if you could, if you could code the bylaws or the governance around the family or the country or the the enterprise in and they that the, that core those core values and principles and things that were the guiding light of how things were built never become corrupted and they're not you know manipulated later on mm -hmm. um then i think you have a really good bedrock and foundation that you can continue to build on top of long term um and i'm hopeful that you know just like you there's there's some type of digital constitution or implementation in governments for this technology and those applications. And I think it would solve a lot of the yeah. things that have transpired or people have become aware of over the last three, four years here. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a smart contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Um, yeah. There's two sides of the coin for that. I mean, it can be used against the people or it could be used for the people. I mean, yeah. that's just the reality. You know, I, we don't like to sugarcoat anything. We, we we see both sides of the aisle. And to believe that's not a possibility <clears throat> is naive. You know that, Jake. Yes. Absolutely. but And, and that's why you, you, what you guys do with the education and this content is so important. If people become aware of this technology and how it can be leveraged and used either for good or, or bad, however you want to label it, um, then then they have a choice right they're they're going to be able to participate in things as they see fit and um potentially be able to leverage the technology that, that benefits everybody i i think we're moving to a time at least i'm hopeful where there's there's been a lot of zero-sum games over the last hundred years where there's winners and losers yes. um and i like to position myself in business where you you have to win for me to win yeah. And if, if you always have aligned interests like that, then everybody's set up for success. It's when people get sideways and, and you have problems. Yeah. Um, where Conflict of interest. Out. Yeah. Um, that's, that's when things don't go well. Mm -hmm. So as long as you can keep aligned interests and if you can code that in again, then it, <laughs> it keeps things from going sideways and, and ending poorly. So anyway, that, yeah. That's what's interesting also about XRP itself. Because if you look at the XRP tokenomics and just how it functions as a currency, and that's why it is a currency, obviously not a security by law, XRP in itself looks and presents itself as a sustainable monetary system. And that means that we can all kind of lift each other up and build prosperity for each other within our own ecosystem. Yeah, and that's what, that's what I'm hopeful for. You know, the... I don't know if it ends up a tier one asset in the banking system or not. That's my speculation. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is adopted at scale and used in the capacity that, you know, I think everybody sitting here believes it will be, um, then there's a potential that, you know, you, 
as long as you meet the qualifications and have the right licenses and, and do what's stated in the regulation, you may be able to issue your own stable coin uh, with that as the backing. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about, you know, uh, what's what's the word that you, you print your own money and the government comes and like uh, counterfeit. counterfeit. <laughs> yeah, it's not counterfeiting currency because in, in this new system, the, the stipulation is going to be that you have to have collateral to back the currency that's being issued. Yeah. Right. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, you guys have touched on this and, and obviously the other people on your channel, these commodities are going to be used for that. You need hard, tangible assets, to uh, back financial instruments that are solid and stable to back the issuance or the, the representation of those on chain to provide the liquidity and exchange that's so easy and the benefit of this technology. Um, right. And we're so, confident it's going in that direction because if it wasn't, then we're just going in a circle back to square one. Well, well and the, the other countries around the world wouldn't be accumulating gold at the clip. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking are. of gold. Um, yeah. Uh, gold, you know, gold is never going to zero. <laughs> so I think it's safe to say that for the last 5,000 years, it's been rising in price. So it's, uh, in my opinion, oh. it's, it's a good buy. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, the thing is also gold has been. It's real money. It's been right. manipulated. You know, we, we can confirm this. How many times has JP Morgan been fined for counter? I'm sorry, not counterfeiting. Spoofing. For, um, spoofing, spoofing the market. Yeah. Exactly. And they can rig the, uh, the precious metals market because they have the printing machine. That's really what they're doing here. Imagine if they did not have that printing machine and all of a sudden all this currency and this debt had to sit upon whatever metric ton of gold is in those central bank reserves. And the paper the price, contracts. Yes, that too, and everything else around it. But the price of gold would have to be reset. Personally, going into a digital world, I get so concerned about digital infrastructure that I pr I. I'd rather have more physical assets. And that's why between my brother and I, well, I am extremely leveraged in physical gold. However, I am extremely positioned in the digital infrastructure as well. But because in case things do go south, you never know, even though I, we're fighting for that not to happen, we're hopeful too. I got something to fall back on that can't be traced, can't be tracked, in fact, I purchased all the gold with cash, so no one knows I even own it, except the listeners. So uh, I don't know don't where it come is. Come look at okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit different um, than maybe some other people on this. I do think that there is a revaluation on the horizon. I don't think that the arbitrage opportunity there is as great as some other opportunities. I think sure. that it's always wealth. Um, the the wealthiest families in the world, the ones you don't even know about. That's where they hold their wealth in gold. Um, and other currencies use that <laughs> to issue their currency. Um, but yeah, I, so for me, I'm, I'm leveraged a bit differently. And again, you know, like you said before, none of this is financial advice. Mm -hmm. um, I have my emergency fund in gold and precious metals, and I'm actually heavier in gold than I am silver uh, because. You know, and, and Valendell and I talked about this. I have a hard time understanding silver going to like $500. Just the, the cost of all of the everyday items that we use that use silver to conduct electricity and the current in them would be astronomically higher. You know, your iPhone, um, your toaster, your, your solar panels, like everything else for the green energy narrative also yeah. becomes substantially more expensive to produce. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know if they replace that with another conduit that's conductive. I know graphene's coming on the scene. Um, we, we have an opportunity there uh, through the mastermind and, and some of the other people that we're affiliated with. But um, yeah, I, I think that there's definitely a revaluation. I just don't know. On the other side of that, I, I think you're hedging yourself to keep whatever wealth you have. And that's yeah. really what gold and, and silver have been for the majority of history. Um, is a store of wealth, right? Mm -hmm. They are money. They are, well, yes. all the forms, right? It's it's actual money. It's not just currency. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think the, the even after the revaluation, because gold still sits at like $42 on the Fed's balance sheet, okay? And, mm -hmm. and what's happened 
over the last, you know, uh, that was 1971, August 15th, when we came off the gold standard. Uh, we've got uh, 50 plus years since then. I don't think the U.S. has stopped aggregating gold during that period. Um, so we probably got more now than we did then. So if they revalued the gold just to today's price, that would be a substantial offset. Uh, I do think it goes a bit higher than that, but I, I think that there, like you mentioned, is going to be a basket of commodities that backs things, um, maybe even things that are still in the ground in these countries. Uh, if you were able to figure that out and then back currency with mineral deposits and whatever else you had there, um, that's easily auditable if you have the right technology. Uh, and as you mind it, you know, you'd be able to hold it in custody and verify it. Um, but I think that the digital assets probably are the more significant appreciation, the better arbitrage opportunity to, to generate wealth. Uh, and I think the the precious metals, like you said, you know, if everything else goes to hell in a handbasket, uh, that's what you want to have in your back pocket, somewhere physical that you can get to uh, mm -hmm. make sure that, that you are set up and, and you maintain your wealth into the future for that yeah. scenario. Yeah, it's yeah. a wealth preservation Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. And digital assets are wealth creation opportunity. Perfectly said. Yeah, that's how I see it. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, Wall Street just posted an article yesterday, Wall Street Journal. I think it was yesterday. They said the economy is doing great. Why is everybody hating on Biden? That was the that was the title. I said this nonsense, man. They're really trying to lie straight to people's face. <laughs> they control the media they control the narrative right absolutely um uh, you know my my wife and i have discussions and she watches a lot of tiktok and other things um and so our opinions differ sometimes uh, which is good I, I like being challenged and having conversation where people don't necessarily agree with me um mm -hmm. but at the same token it allows me to understand that you know even those channels are being perverted manipulated by the media here in the u.s mm -hmm. um because there's there's certain messaging that's being promoted over other things uh, i'm glad that uh elon ended up with x i think mm -hmm. that uh a lot of that is has changed on that platform there's still a bunch of garbage on there yeah. but um i think that you're at least allowed to post the garbage if you want to and it's not moderated the way it was and curated to promote a certain narrative. So, and that's what I want. I just want freedom of speech, people to be able to speak their minds and then everybody gets to make their own choices after they, you know, get educated on whatever topic that they're trying to decide on. Yeah. yeah. At least the information should be out there for whoever wants right. to share it. With, with the implementation of this technology, people are going to have to retool and, and get educated and, and again, I, I like the. Re this is one of the reasons I really enjoy y'all's show and the content that you produce. Is if you're if you're looking into this stuff now and you're educating yourself, you'll have an advantage over other people that get left behind. There's there's going to be a huge disruption in a lot of industries over the next five to ten years, and jobs are going to go away. AI mm -hmm. is going to replace a ton of things. If you're not leveraging it, you're going to get left behind. Same thing with these, you know, three D printing or biotech or or blockchain smart contracts. Technology is going to continue to progress, and it's going to be at an even faster rate than it has been over the last 20 years. We're we're at an inflection point in Moore's Law where things are about to go parabolic mm -hmm. um, as things progress. And there'll be industries that get spun up, you know, that completely eradicate the previous one. And it'll it'll be take precedent for two to three years. And then something new will come over that and, and wipe it out. Like Blockbuster was in vogue for, I don't know, a couple decades before... Netflix came along and and now they're back to one store, the original one, right? Um, yeah, yeah it's like an antique. Thing. Yeah, well, it's it's nostalgia. There's people that you know would love to go to that and remember their childhood, mm -hmm. but um, the the monetary gain is no longer there. The incentive, you know, people have moved to digital media, um, traditional means of you know, uh, even cable and and dish and. Um, all of the the things that I grew up with as a kid. Now everybody streams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, you don't even watch regular TV. Anymore. Yeah. Um, and that'll continue to progress. You know, I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, they implement micro payments and you just pay as you watch instead of having to pay these subscription fees. Micro payments. Right. I think, <clears throat> Jake, I have to interrupt you here. 
Listen, you guys, uh, I think 100% that's coming. Mm -hmm. Micropayments are coming because that's what digital assets <clears throat> in the blockchain offers, you know? So it's specifically feasible. stellar. Yeah. For example, if you have a subscription with uh, a newsletter or the Wall Street Journal, whatever, um, why should I charge you 20 bucks a month if you don't even watch it every or read it every single day? It could be a micro payment charging you for every time you actually look at it for use. you know, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. I see that eventually happening in the future. Uh, I do. Yeah. Yeah. There was um... gym memberships, you know, I mean, same thing. <laughs> right. How many people pay for a gym membership and then go, you know, you know why planet uh, fitness um, real quick, this is interesting, uh, but planet fitness was one of the most successful gyms in the United States in their growth and revenue growth, because this was their secret that I learned. They, ch they charge so low for their memberships that even when people decide to leave the country or the state or switch or not show up, they wouldn't even cancel it because it was so low. Well, I, I might use it later. I'll just leave it open. Yeah, it's know? only 10 bucks or yeah. whatever, you know. Isn't yeah. that a brilliant <laughs> business model? It's just insane. But the the rev and and the multiple that you get on a business that has monthly reoccurring revenue at, at that amount is significantly higher than something that's a one time transaction. And, oh, yeah. and if your churn, if you can lower your churn like that and your your LTV to CAC is you know sig like significant huge, then yeah. yeah you can get a really large premium uh is that a public company could find fitness isn't public are they I, I don't think so i don't think so no i, I think I, they're private i would bet that they have a a billion dollar valuation on their private company i bet they're a unicorn they yes surprised. i mean they're all over yeah every block man i mean not ne not really but they're all <laughs> over the place yeah the, the secret is no deadlifts, no grunting, and you got to offer pizza and donuts on Fridays at the gym. Yeah, know? and keep it at 10 bucks max. <laughs> so, <laughs> so funny. That's funny. Uh, but real quick, funny. Jake, you know how you were saying AI is going to, well, we're at that pivotal stage right now where the economy, the economy and different sectors in the economy are being disrupted by technology, AI, and it's going to create more unemployment in certain sectors of the market. That's 100% true. I just wanted to confirm that. And it's happening as we speak because the other day, it was maybe a month ago. And I think I mentioned this in our last call where I spoke, I was on the phone with a lady at the credit union, a banker. And uh, she, she told me to leave her a voicemail, okay? Um, because I said I wanted to call her back. And then before that, she said, actually, actually, we don't have that anymore. I just remembered they removed the voicemail because now they have this AI thing and she's an older lady. She doesn't even know what it is. She just knows it's an AI thing. So that's what she told me. And that's here in Dallas. So yeah, it's already happening. I mean, well, this is just the beginning stages. Uh, I was at the bank not too long ago and the lady was telling me I could have done this online. And I said, I know, but if I did it online, you wouldn't have a job, would you? So I'll, I'll bring this in and, and, you know, Vendel was nice enough to come on my live not too long ago. And we kind oh, of, Oh, I'm happy this. you invited me, man. Um, you guys have great people on your show that all have different expertise, right? Maybe it's the bond market or commodities or digital assets or, you know, a certain type of macroeconomics, um, maybe even stocks. Right. Mm -hmm. But I, I watch about 40 different people. Um, and I put my economic, and macro outlook together based on all of their conversations. Um, and there's one gentleman in particular that talks about a deflationary collapse because of the progression of technology. Um, but he, he doesn't have the insight on the digital asset side of things and what can be done with that. So we, we talked about UBI uh, and obviously these jobs are going to be displaced and people are going to need income and social programs. And, and that's normally in the past been a big drain on society, right? You got to raise tax dollars. More people have to pay into the bucket to be able to help those with the social need. Uh, and I'm not saying that's wrong. You know, I think that there are people that need social programs. You fall on hard times and it's nice to have mm -hmm. that. I don't know that it's the government's place to do it, but, you know, private organizations, there should be something there for people to help people. They're down. Sure. So with, with the UBI and the CBDC, this is feasible. Okay. 
and, and don't get mad at me. I know people are going to be like, oh, you're a socialist. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just explaining you how this could happen. Mm-hmm. So because the productivity in our economy might shift to on, on, on autonomous code and AI and these other things that increase efficiencies, uh, the cost of things are going to come down. The technology technological advancement each year has a deflationary effect to the tune of about seven to nine percent. Okay. The the mandate of the Fed is to get two percent inflation. So what do they do? We have M2 and they print 10% more money every year, and we have a, a seven percent deflationary effect of technology, and they they maintain their mandate. But the M2 money supply looks crazy if you look at the chart. Okay, so now these things are gonna go parabolic. Uh, and we're going to have a significant deflationary effect when they roll all these things out and they're going to converge. We've got all of these fantastic, efficient technologies that are going to come together all at the same time. Like I talked about Moore's law increasing Mm -hmm. exponentially. So if you had an AI that could view all the transactions across an economy, it could then allocate capital appropriately and incentivize and disincentivize spending in certain sections of the economy to maintain stability. This is why the Soviet Union collapsed. They couldn't allocate assets and resources appropriately. Um, they were socialist, right? And yeah. people think that that's bad, but there, there's a lot of benefits there. And there's, you know, you look at Marx and other people that were very intelligent people that liked that side. And there's, but I think there's somewhere in between if you utilize this technology that you could actually print money mm-hmm. in opposition to the deflation that's happening and, and the price coming down on everything to hold price stability Mm -hmm. at a reasonable level for people to live uh, and actually dole out money um, to people in UBI. And again, you know, they're not going to get to pick exactly how they get to spend it. It's free money, just like the STEMI checks that they, Mm -hmm. they baited everybody with in 2020. Yeah. Kind of got you used to that, warmed up to it a little bit, you know, Um, they'll be able to program that. And then, that's that's an actual feasible way. It's going to take time. I'm not saying this happens tomorrow, but if if you could implement digital currencies, you could track all the transactions. That's something that could be brought in that actually creates a stable way to produce UBI and and put it out into an economy. Yeah, and the other, you're right, 100. percent And the uh, so there's always the pros and cons to everything here, mm-hmm. and we were talking about the pros right now, mm-hmm. um, how it could benefit the economy based on the direction we're going in. Um, the other mandate the Fed has is maintain employment, you know? So uh, that is direct in that's um, the whole other side of the spectrum because uh, uh, as we progress with the technology, we're going to have more unemployment, which means we're going to have more need for the CBDCs or stimulus, whatever you want to call it. For the people just so they could survive or they fix the whole situation by coming out with another orchestrated event and wipe out a lot of people so i mean either way unemployment is inevitable more unemployment due to the technology and ai um so for anybody watching if you're in university or college this is not my advice but just be very cautious with what you're committing your life and studies to because a lot of these courses and classes and degrees are really it's sad to say but it's a fact they're you they're going to be irrelevant in the coming years so be very mindful of that and um, we talked with our friend clive thompson retired wealth manager in switzerland and we had the same discussion and he said some some of the jobs that are going to be in such high demand are the ones that are above the AI, controlling the AI, programmers, cybersecurity, you know, things of that nature. Um, very, very high demand. So, yeah. Trades, I would say trades aren't going anywhere either. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, you're right. Mm-hmm. It, you know, I, I thought when I was younger and a bit naive that it would be physical labor that was going to be replaced first by robots and and implementing efficiency and we see that in factories you know factories have been automated i worked in that industry for an extended period of time and watched the progression happen there where few and few people fewer and fewer people are needed on a production line um 
But as far as like technicians working on things, uh, HVAC, plumbers, electrician, welders, all that stuff, I, I think that that's still far off. Mm -hmm. uh, my boy's still young. And so, you know, I'll encourage him to, if, if he doesn't want to do anything, want anything to do with what I'm doing, uh, which may be the case, mm -hmm. um, then I'd encourage him to go to a trade school and, and learn something where he able, he's able to work with his hands and then build a business for himself in that area. Um, yeah. but yeah, if, if you're going for like accounting or, um, you're a journalist, uh, hell, if you're even an artist, you know, I think yeah. a lot of those, um, career paths, uh, musician, there's just so many things that AI can do. I don't say as good as a human, obviously it's iterating on top of the information sure. that we're providing. Um, and, and maybe, you know, you get to the point where the, the cool part about AI is the efficiencies it creates for, for you. So I don't know if you guys use chat mm -hmm. GPT. Um, yeah, I, good for titles. Oh my gosh. Like <laughs> the efficiencies yeah. that it's been able to create for my business and putting together content, um, drafting documents, building out, you know, templates and different things that we do for the mastermind in the group. Um, so good. Phenomenal. I know. Yeah. Um, and Saves obviously you it's time. perfect. We don't just take the AI and then yeah. take it market, but it, it gives you a very good base to it's work like a, off of. Mm -hmm. Um, instead of taking hours to do something, it might take me 30 minutes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's well, things like mid journey. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard of that. Um, really the art that it can come up with is just gorgeous. I mean, it's, uh, so as you're, as you were speaking about artists, yeah, be realistic. You people watching, um, yeah, you be realistic watch. and smart. Don't just jump into something because it's your passion. And <laughs> I learned that, uh, making money in this world and building wealth, you, you don't follow your passion. You, you go for what makes the money. And then with the money, now you go to your passion. So yeah. it's opposite. Because, uh, you know, it's very difficult to succeed in this economy if you have a liberal arts degree. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I know we're coming close to the end here, but I, I want to leave you guys with with something. Um, you don't watch Patrick Bet David and Valuetainment at all? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Occasionally, he's, yeah. I, he, I've been watching him for a long time, actually. <laughs> he's he's great. Um, there's he has a paradigm that he shared in one of his videos where he talks about breaking your life into to 20 year segments, uh, that I thought was fantastic. And so I, I'm going to give you all the 20 year segments, uh, cause it's relevant to the conversation. So he said for the first 20 years, just, just don't F up. Like don't be in the car with the guy selling dope. Don't, don't put yourself as a, at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's by having a child or, or getting a conviction or like you're going to do stupid things when you're young, just be, smart about them and don't put yourself in at a disadvantage. Sure. Uh, the next 20 years, 20 to 40 years old, he talks about building a vehicle for wealth and a skill set that allows you to have the money for later on in life. So, you know, you take maybe the first 10 years of that and you work for other corporations and develop a skill set and all the beliefs and traits mm -hmm. that you're going to need to build whatever it is and whatever segment of the economy for the next 10 years. And that's when you really hammer down and you become a master at your craft and you build that base for yourself where you have the wealth that carries you through the rest of your life. Yeah. And then from 40 to 60, he talks about reinventing yourself. That's what you're talking about. The passions, right? You can go back to all the things you're still young enough that you've got time. You've got your health, hopefully, uh, and you're able to go travel or do the art or music, play, play instruments, learn other languages, mm -hmm. do all the things that you may have foregone when you were a bit younger, but now you have the resources and the time to do yeah. all those things. Exactly. And then the last 20 years, you know, so let's say you live past 80. Um, the last part of your life is all about giving back. So maybe, maybe that's through politics. Maybe it's through mentorships. Maybe it's through fellowship. Maybe you're a preacher, um, whatever that is to you in your life. Yeah. Um, but you're able to give back to the community because you, your, your cup overflows, right? You've got more than you need of uh, from the things that you've built in your life and the things that you've done. And so you're able to give back to others. Uh, and I just really thought that that was, you know, a beautiful way to look at it. And construct that is. It kind of gives you. I, I, I totally agree. Like yeah. actionable items that you can focus on for those periods of your life. Have you all read uh, The Future is Faster Than You Think? No, I have not. Mm -mm. Check, check that out. It was written in 2019. 
uh, okay. before you know, the, the craziness that we've had. Uh, but it, it talks a lot about what I discussed there with Moore's Law and the advancement of technology and all the different technologies that are converging right now. And one of those was like Airbuses and, and flying transport. So funny oh you mentioned that. Very We're interesting. I'm going to look at that. Yeah. Good stuff. Wonderful. Well, I think uh, we had a great conversation. Man, I always love talking to you. You too, Versan. Oh, good stuff. I love talking to you too. <laughs> uh, well, I just got to say, uh, everybody watching, um, continue to be diligent, you know, work on yourself. Like Jake said, uh, as Versan said, you know, continue to buy if you can afford to and hold. Think long term, in other words, not financial advice, but have that long term mindset because as Jake said, you know, time in the market always beats timing the market and we're here at the right time. So just uh, stay in the game, basically. Yeah, I agree. Appreciate you guys having me on. Um, I assume you guys will, will post links below for anything oh, yeah. that I'm affiliated wow. with. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, if anybody wants to reach out to me, it's digitalfamilyoffice.io. Uh, you book a time, help you set up your LLC. Uh, we have a you know a lot of other services that I mentioned before. And then uh, if you want to be a part of a group or a community that has aligned interests with digital assets, and um, wants to learn about financial education and business resources, mastermind.beyondbroke.com. We would love to have you. Excellent. Excellent. All right, brother. We'll talk soon, okay? Stay safe. Yes, sir. Y'all too. Thanks All for right. having me. Thank you. Always, man. Thank you.